Hey, good evening folks, this is Shadow Storms coming at you with another video. Um, today I'm going to be covering my thoughts on what's going on with AMC and the Ape Dividend. Um, I want to cover what's going on um, with some of the major theories or sides, I guess, um, what's happening in the whole Twitterverse or whatever you call it, with um, a lot of the big figures, I guess, around these uh, meme stocks. Um, I came across two interesting thoughts, um, one from Meet Kevin and one from Matt Kors, and I thought I'd, I'd go over it and then um, try to understand what the other side's doing. So I think the easiest way to go over um, the two underlying sides, it seems like, is to help um, demonstrate it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull, pull out a little sketch pad here. So, just let's start off the baseline. Um, I'm going to basically round out numbers to make things super easy. Um, so what I want to establish is, okay, we have AMC. We had AMC, let's say, on Friday. On Friday, it was $20. So come Monday, you have AMC and you have eight. In a perfect scenario, you would have, as a result, AMC at 10, and you have Ape at 10. Also, in this case, I'm just going to say 500 million shares. So, on Friday, AMC, let's say, was $20. Just to make calculations simple. And let's say, same thing, for calculation simplicity, there was 500 million outstanding shares. Well, now we're at Monday. We have AMC listed in the stock market. We have Ape listed in the stock market. AMC is $10. Ape is $10. They also both have 500, let's say, exactly 500 mil, 500 mil shares. So, what happened to your investment? So, if you had, let's say, just make it super simple, one share of AMC, so yet you, you invested $20. Come Monday, if AMC is $10 and Ape is $10, you combine both values because you have one share of Ape, or sorry, one share of Ape, one share of AMC, $10 for $10. You still have $20. Your investments, the financial investment, really, the value of it, hasn't changed technically. It, you still have $20 worth. You had $20 worth when, when you bought that share of AMC on whatever, if you had it on Friday, $20. Come Monday, if AMC is 10, Ape is 10, you have $10. Hope everyone um, understands me so far. Now, the prevailing um, idea of what some people are saying is, hey, you see this ape here? Sell that and pour that money into AMC. Why? So let, let, let's get you a scenario. So um, let's, let's go based on facts. This is from the SEC Edgar database. I pulled up AMC. This is from their 8K filing. This is from their uh, frequently FAQ, frequently asked questions. And we know, let's see, they currently have 516.8 million ape. They have authorized 1 billion ape so far. And we know that, hey, while they have no plan or intention to authorize more than a billion, than this billing that they were already done. They may, however, they may do it at any time in the future at its sole discretion, including 2022, this year, or next year, if it deems such an issuance is in its best interest. So, 
for the simplicity of calculations, I say, let's say, 500 million. Well, they have 1 billion authorized already, meaning that they should have 1 billion remaining, right? So this is where number 9 is in, in, um, important. Can AMC issue 400 da, 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 8 units in the future without shareholder approval? Well, they talk about how it was already approved back in 2013. So they could dilute um, APE with this additional amount. So let's go back here. You have AMC, $10. And let's say that dilution occurs. So let's say we have APE here. And instead of 500, now you add in another 500 mil. So that brings it to what? One bill. A billion shares. AMC is untouched. AMC has no extra um, shares that they can authorize to sell. So AMC still remains at a 500 mil. Well, in this case, there was no dilution of AMC. There's only 500 mil. There's 500 mil before. There's 500 mil now. So the thought is, AMC is $10. But guess what? Ape went from only 500 mil shares available to 1 billion shares. You have doubled the amount of shares available. So what happens to this price, this $10 price? Theoretically, you have twice as many shares out in the market, so you know what? It's now worth $5. So in this case, what happens? You initially had $20, right? You had invested $20 in that share of AMC on Friday. But if that dilution occurs, hey, what happens? $10 plus $5. You only have fifteen dollars. You lost five dollars of your, your. You lost five dollars of that, of which the twenty dollars you initially spent. So the whole point that I think Matt and Kevin are saying that hey, you know what? This ape can continue to be diluted, because let's look at let's look, let's look back at this. here how many a preferred or AMC preferred equity units are there theoretically over the lifetime of the security the maximum number of AMC preferred equity units that could be authorized over time is up to five billion this is based on the total number of authorized preferred stock of 50 million remember the whole one one and one hundredth that's where this comes into play that 50 mil shares of preferred stock equals to 500, uh, 5 billion equity units. They've authorized 1 billion. They can authorize more. Total authorization is 5 billion. They've authorized 1 billion. So they have 4 billion left that they could, um, that they could choose to sell. Technically, they have 4.5 billion. So what happens to this value, this whatever, at $10? You add on 4.5 billion shares. What happens when you dilute, when you initially only have approximately 500 million shares? You dilute it by 4.5 billion shares. This value will go down. That's the worry. You would be essentially losing money if everything else holds the same. Your AMC would remain at 10. Your APE would continue to fall down. That seems to be the point 
um, or perspective where Meet Kevin, uh, Matt Coors, and some of the other folks seem to be going on. Now, the other side will now contend with this. They're saying that, hey, you know what? Well, because of this dilution from 500 million to whatever, let's say a billion shares, when you add in an extra 500 million, well, guess what? Well, while this value, let's say if imperfectly it goes down to five bucks, well, we've added money to AMC. We're so what? What's the math on that? It's five dollars, right? Times five hundred million shares. Five hundred million times five, right? So what's that come out to? Equals two point five billion. Now that 2.5 billion would go back to AMC. 2.5 billion would help wipe off half of that five billion that five billion dollar debt. That helps cover their pending 500 plus million debt um, under the terms of the ODL loan. And as a result, um, fundamentally, financially, AMC is in a better place because, hey, they were able to reduce this much debt off their balance sheet. They were able to pay that much. They have extra cash, cash on hand. They have extra liquidity. They're, they've paid down debt. All the while, the share of AMC has not, has gone down. It hasn't gotten diluted. The fundamental value has gone up. So theoretically, this value now, $10, would go up. That's what the contention is. But the question becomes then, when you add in 500 million extra shares, for example, based on the initial 1 billion authorized, we don't know exactly if it'll go down half its value. We don't know that. You would theoretically think, hey, if there's twice as many shares, well, the value should be in half, but there's multiple different things that affect the market. And I think that's the important part to consider. We have supply and demand. There's different, the valuation of this ticker, of this stock, is different. On, it, the, the conditions will change. The environment will affect it. So we don't know exactly how much from whatever this theoretical value, let's say 10, we don't know if it'll go down to 5. Will it go down to $7, 7.5? Maybe it goes down half that amount. Maybe it goes down more than that. We don't exactly know. But we do know that fundamentally, because there's more of this, it should go down. And also we do know that because with this dilution of APE, if they're able to raise money, will that help strengthen AMC's balance sheet? But we don't know if that would accurately, we don't know how much will, that will boost up AMC's um, share price. We don't know that, hey, if 8 goes down by $5, it, if it's, it goes down by 5 we don't know if AMC will go up to 15 We don't know that. Maybe it only goes up to 11 Or maybe it goes up to 20 Maybe it goes up to 30 We don't know. The demand and supply, buyers and sellers, will determine what people will buy that, what people will sell it at, and what that price is. And as retail investors, we're part of that system. We put in a price that we would like to purchase a stock at. If there's someone across the side, on the other side, that's willing to sell at that price, hey, I bought that share. I now own that share. 
it's hard to exactly give a price in which what would occur if we dilute by if we dilute the shares by half go from 100 million to a billion logically just on a strictly numbers basis because there's twice as many shares you think that hey the value would go down by half it doesn't always mean like it doesn't mean that it'll go down exactly by half all we know is that hey theoretically it should go down a lot more supply and just on the flip side we know that hey because money was raised because the balance sheet improved fundamentally financially on the balance sheet that improved so the stock should go up in, in value but we don't know by exactly how much that stock will go up in value because we don't know we don't know exactly how much people really deem what each share is worth we we don't deter i mean the market as a collective will determine what that price is so i think that's where the the, the problem is now there's a couple other scenarios i um i do want to go over in regards to the situation um i think the one thing that meet kevin takes to a further degree is that hey you know what this dilution um there needs to be an agreement that this dilution occurs and for the conversion to amc to occur for this ape to have value that is his interpretation um personally I'm still I'm still up in the air about it. This is a interesting situation because you have AMC sh common shares. It's based on the fundamental, um, partly on the financial fundamental s situation of the stock, and then you have Ape, which is a pref preferred share, preferred share of this of the same company of AMC. So how much of APE is really tied to fully AMC? Or are these implicitly, are these all both combined together and they represent exactly half of, e half of each company? That's hard to say. For me, I buy more into the fact that, hey, you know what? AMC, common shares, derive its value from obviously the company AMC and its financial performance. Ape on the other hand is more along the lines of what what people will just deem it. Sure it might have some sentiment based on how AMC performs but this Ape doesn't really have value monetary value until we know that hey this ape can be turned into amc that's the point where i'll some i'll agree with me kevin until ape can be converted to amc what is really the point of ape will ape perf will amc's performance directly correlate with uh ape If AMC suddenly, for some odd reason, this is completely theoretical, this is just to highlight the situation. If AMC d decides to dilute AMC common shares, and as a result, it's able to raise money, how does that affect APE? Does the value of APE go up? Does the value of APE go down? That's the tricky part. What, where is the valuation of this ape coming from? Is it coming from the company, 
AMC. Is it coming from what people of outside deem it? Is it based on the hope, the value, the hope that hey, you know what, this will soon turn to AMC at whatever ratio, one to one, two to one, ten to one, hundred to one, whatever. Voting rights wise, it's basically one to one. One ape has the same voting rights as one common AMC share. Do you dilute this ape from 500 mil to one bill? Well, still, one ape will have one vote. AMC, one AMC will have one vote. So, technically, hey, you want more voting power, ape is cheaper. Theoretically. And then that leads that leads down to another 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 deep hole. When you have this extra dilution and you have this extra voting power, so what happens? You have one billion ape one billion votes here, and you have five hundred million votes here. So you'd have a collective 1.5 billion votes. Upon the situation, the board has to propose it and it needs to be voted on and approved for APE to be converted to AMC. Well, who owns the majority of this? of these shares. If in the case where ape is five dollars per share due to the supposed dilution and AMC is five hundred million, well for your dollar value per vote, you can get two two votes for ten dollars if you have ape, or you can have one vote for ten dollars with AMC. In this case, obviously, APE is a cheaper way to gain more voting power. In this case, how will that affect the overall running of AMC? Because when AMC, when you're voting for APE to be con um, convertible to AMC, you're going to be diluting what this AMC is worth. So that poses the question then. Is the board going to want to do that? What is their reasoning behind why they would want to dilute APE back into AMC? Your dollar value per share of AMC would go down. Because you'd have to obviously increase the amount of shares. You have to increase the um, authorized shares and increase the number of shares outstanding so that, hey, you could, whatever this conversion ratio is, if it's one to one, if there's one billion shares and it's one to one, then hey, you need to increase this by one billion. And guess what? You add on one billion to 500 million, well, this value, this $10 value, is going to plummet. So now, your $20 initial valuation has crushed down from potentially 10 down even lower. But we need to factor in, hey, how much money was raised? How much money is poured back into the company to help whatever, mergers and acquisitions, um, other investment opportunities, paying down debt, able to refinance, restructure debt, etc. Different, um, negotiate different leases, negotiate um, lease payments, um, rent, etc. Renovations, upgrades to the company. Like, how is that money used? How much is it? How much is how much is raised? We don't know. 
So there's demand, so many different facets to this type of a situation. But on the short term, on a purely theoretical, on the most simplistic manner, if you had AMC on Friday and you have AMC and Ape on Monday, the safer bet in regards to just strictly the financial monetary value of your investment would be, hey, pour it into AMC. Because AMC initially will have no fear of dilution. They have no more shares to dilute AMC with. Only way that they could dilute AMC is, hey, if the board um, sends out a proposal to shareholders that, hey, we want to authorize more shares of AMC, will you allow us? And the shareholders will have to say, they'd have to vote yes. Only then could they increase the number of out, um, authorized shares and as a result, of sell shares into the market so that it increases their outstanding. That's the only way that would occur. And that's the only way this value would go down. So there's protection. But on the flip side, Ape, as we said, they have, they can do whatever. They have 516 million, 16.8 million, because there's one AMC share, um, each AMC, sh AMC share get to one eight. It's only one to one, but hey, they have one billion units already authorized, so they could sell this remaining 483 million eight. And as you can see, just bait, loose, loose, easy calculation math from 500 mil plus another 500 mil, which is 1 billion, that value of a will go down. It'll dilute it. So as a result, your, init, your, your value could go down. Yes, this dilution will help raise money and that will help push up the value of AMC. And I understand that, hey, if you sell your ape, then hey, will that selling lead to selling pressure and help drive the price of ape down, meaning that they're not able to raise as much money and as a result, not able to push up AMC as much. I understand that perspective too. But it all comes down to buyers and sellers if they're willing to how many people are willing to buy it at five six seven eight nine ten dollars versus how many people are willing to sell at ten nine eight seven blah 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 so it, it's hard to say what side is really right or what side is really wrong on the most simplistic level, the safer bet, and I'll agree, is that, hey, park it in AMC. AMC does not have dilution fears. Your value of that stock will move strictly based on how the company AMC performs. But APE could be a different situation. That's the thing, because not only does a potentially have to play with how market demand, demand supply and demand plays, how hold the market as a collective plays. There might be other sentiment in regards to how the AMC as a company performs that will also influence it. So that's where I think that there's, as I'll agree, as some of the other YouTubers and people on Twitter will say, there's additional risk. There's additional risk that, hey, your $10 initially could go down to five, could down to one. Or maybe it skyrockets to 20, 50, whatever. But that's the additional risk. Is that risk worth it? 
those who don't want that risk, this AMC here, there is no risk. This dilution will not occur immediately. On the flip side, yeah, maybe you can make this argument. They don't have to sell 4.5 billion shares. They don't have to sell this 500 million. And to that, I will argue. I'll make this financial, this fundamental point. Pull up AMC's 10Q. Look at their net loss. 121.6 million for this past quarter. Q2. So far, first six months of the year, $459 million lost. How much money do they have on hand? 965.2 cash and cash equivalents on hand. How much do they have on December? They started with one, nearly 1.6. Between their investments and their operating losses, their whole, I mean the net losses, they're down to $965 million. Now, what's my worry? My worry is, once again, net loss. They are not making money quarter after quarter. $459 million in six months, 121.6 this past um, quarter, sorry, six months, and then this past quarter, the last three months. Yes, quarter one had significantly more loss than quarter two. But let's factor in. Movie theaters will, in general, do not do as well in Q3. And the CEO, Adam Aaron, has already come out and said that, hey, Q3 will probably not be good as Q2. So guess what? This loss number will probably increase. If Q3 is not as good as Q2, how is this number going to improve? It won't. How bad will it be? I don't know. It's going to be worse than this, though. So guess what? You're going to have to subtract at least another $120 million from 965 cash on hand. So now you're down, what, from, so let's say 121 or 120 from 865. That's what, 840 roughly, 845. And guess what, let's go down. 2023, principal payments required of maturities for corporate borrowings. 520, $525.6 million. That's a lot of money that they need to pay. This Odeon term loan facility, that $500 million, that's coming up in August. They have one year to come up with $500 million to pay off if they're not able to restructure, renegotiate that debt. Well, what's that coming out of then? That'll have to come out of, where's their cash on hand? This cash on hand. So let's, hopefully you can see this. So he said 965.2, let's subtract at least 121.6, they have 843.6. And where's their debt? Oops. Sorry about this, let me, where are you? Oh, this, this is even considering the, the lease payments, too. But lease payments aside, come on. There we go, corporate debt. Minus 
the 525.6 million that they have due. They have 318 million cash on hand then. That's just factoring in quarter three results. Quarter three could come in significantly worse than what quarter two came in at, at 121. Maybe it comes in closer to quarter one numbers. So we can always pull in quarter one. So let's pull that up. Quarter one was 337 mil. So you know what? Let's redo the math. Let's add in 121.6 and instead subtract 337.4. If they have a quarter three as bad as quarter one, they're down to $102.2 million cash on hand. Well, now you're thinking, hey, that's all right. That's not a problem. No, that is a problem. You know why? Because they have debt covenants that require a certain amount of money that they need to have on hand. Right here, the company entered into the entered the ninth amendment to the credit agreement, March 8th, 2021. Yada yada yada. The company is currently subject to minimal liquidity requirements of approximately 139.5 million dollars of which 100 is required under the conditions of the extended covenant suspension period as amended under the Senior Secure Revolving Credit Facility and 325.32.5 million of which is required under the Odeon Term Loan Facility. Well guess what? They need to have 139.5 million. They had only have 102.2 million. That would be bad. Well, okay. Well, then they we could say you have quarter four, you have another quarter one, and not quite through another quarter two. But nonetheless, you have just under one year to make debt payments, which could potentially really take a hit to your liquidity. So far, we have not seen AMC post post COVID a quarter where they weren't having a net loss. Quarter two was their best so far at, at minus 121. They could come in worse. Q3 could be bad, so that loss could be worse. As I mentioned, I pulled up quarter one's numbers and quarter one was minus 337. So they could have another quarter three that's similar to a quarter one. And then once again, you s one positive catalyst then would be, hey, quarter four could be amazing. Maybe quarter four actually beats this minus 121. But it would have to beat that. It would have to be in the positive. If quarter four isn't positive, well, we know quarter one, 2023, that will probably be negative then. Quarter two, if it's not as good as 2022 quarter two, well, they're out of money. So that all pulls back to this. They need to raise money. They would have to dilute eight. So dilution is, oh, in my calculations, unless suddenly there's crazy good releases, which I don't really see in the pipeline so far this year, sure there's a couple Marvel movies, but is it enough to beat all the supposed good releases so far? Minions, Jurassic, the Jurassic Park or Jurassic Dominion, whatever the dress, the dinosaur movie. Minions, Jurassic Park, whatever that was, um, Top Gun, Doctor Strange, etc. Or the later half of this year, is that going to be enough to push AMC to profitability, to have positive cash flow, so that, hey, they don't have to dilute? I don't have that confidence. 
So I think dilution is most certainly on the table. That dilution will have to occur probably by Q1 of next year. Q3 is going to drain them of money. So the calculation was, hey, they have 965.2 right now. If they post a terrible quarter like Q1, that should bring them down to, let's do that number right now, 965.2 minus 337.4. That brings down to 627.8. If Q, Q4 of this year, let's say they break completely even. Okay, they're, same, they're at that same level. Okay. But if Q1 2023 is the exact same as 2022, that's another 337.4 down. 290. So now they run into Q2 with only 290 million cash on hand. And they only have a couple months left to pay a debt of over 500, $525 million. So that dilution would have to occur. And remember, as I told you, under the debt um, covenants, they need to have minimum one one thirty nine point five mil. They need to have minimum that. That's their minimum liquidity requirement. So for sure, uh, I would say, in my opinion, dilution is occur going to occur within the next nine months, so by the end of quarter one, 2023, dilution will probably have to occur unless quarter three, quarter four come in spectacular. If not, that dilution will occur. And as a result, that will most likely push down what this value of eight is. And on the flip, and also the thing to consider is AMPs, this is not completely within a bubble, I would think. If there's bad news about AMC overall, I think that, hey, it will take a hit, so will AMC. So dilution occurs, this value will go down. But why is there dilution? Well, because they need to raise money because the company's not doing well. Well, that's another negative catalyst for AMC. So this will go down too. But how much is affected? What is affected more? I don't know. I would think that, hey, you know what? Maybe AMC is a little bit more insulated than Ape. That's my thought. But nonetheless, this has been a pretty damn long ass video, um, but I just wanted to cover my thoughts of this whole situation, cover what um, what the popular um, YouTubers and um, Twitters and etc. are talking about, and then help push in some of the other thoughts of what um, some of the other and the big AMC folks on Twitter and YouTube are also talking about. So um, I know. Tara Bull has given inputs, um, the, the Froggy Man, um, was it Tony DeNaro, etc. Like, there's tons of different views, but um, I think that this, in, this kind of encapsulates and kind of covers the situation. Um, a lot of confusion occurs uh, because people don't quite see the whole picture. Um, nonetheless, one final point I do want to um, point out before um, ending the video um, is the stress that the, the fear that a lot of people have, once again, I mentioned this maybe 10-15 minutes ago in the video, is that, hey, you sell Ape, 
that's going to potentially put selling increased selling pressure and because there's more selling pressure than buying pressure then hey that will potentially reduce the price of ape and because that reduces the price of ape if they try to dilute they don't bring in as much money from dilution and it's a whole negative feedback that's definitely one portion definitely understand that situation on the flip side that's completely up to what each individual investor wants to do um, I don't believe in the whole hey this will expose synthetic shares yada 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 I don't believe any of that I believe on what SEC filings what these filings these 10Q filings these 8K filings that that are official statements from the company, what they say, what these 8Ks are saying. I, tr I trust in that. I'll trust the market mechanics. People questioning, oh, how is this halted X many times in a day? I don't believe in the conspiracy theories. There are tinfoil hat theories. Volatility halts have specific rules of at what point they are triggered those five minute triggers the five minute halts have a calc formulation formulas and calculations of exactly what the price band is and if a price move movement is outside of that band that's what considers calls a trigger it's not some board that that maliciously will I'll say hey you know what I'm just gonna pull a trigger and say you know what oh I'm just gonna halt this stock that doesn't occur folks you just do the math if you think something fishy is going on then do the exact math put the numbers into the formula calculate the price bands and tell me and show me hey trigger should not have occurred because hey this point in time the share price was exactly this this point in time the share price was exactly this according to this formula this five minute time frame this price this price the percentage um, calculation allowed for certain secured um, certain level securities you know what the fluctuation allowed should have been this but you know what the, the fluctuation was less than um, what the requirement is to trigger a halt yeah this is manipulation until you show me that that proof I don't believe it because these rules were set into place before all this meme stocks. The LUL lull D, this stuff was put into place way before 2021. This is not something brand new to the markets.